Next up is precision and uncertainty. And let's go back to this idea of how wide this page is. Now, presumably if we grabbed a measuring tape and we measured that, and I'm gonna try and draw that measuring tape. So eight and a half inches, so let's say this is eight, and here's nine. Because we've got a number here to one decimal place, I know that there are some other um, markings on my measuring tool. Point 0.1 of an inch is our precision, means my measuring tape must be marked like so. Now, when I say eight and a half, and a half inches, the reality is, I know it's somewhere, I'm going to change color so you can see what I mean, in this range when I measured, right? If it was a little bit on this side of eight and a half or a little bit on that side of eight and a half, we would still say eight and a half. Our precision controls how big that, that gap is where we are estimating and we reflect that in our statement or in our measurement by using something called uncertainty. Once you know your precision, take half to find uncertainty. So in this measuring tape, if our precision is 0.1, then uncertainty is half of that, or 0 0.05 of an inch. Now that just describes the fact that halfway to the next tick on the measuring device, we're going to round down. Halfway on this side, we're going to round up that this 8.5 could actually have been, or with its uncertainty, looks like this. Because it could really have been 8.45 or 8.55. It's somewhere in that gap. That's why we call it uncertainty, because we're uncertain where in that gap. Now, when we think about the grand scheme of things, the, the less precise something is, in other words, the bigger the precision number, the bigger the uncertainty, meaning the less, less certain we are of our, our measurement. So let's say I have a, a, an oven and it's just got a little push button on it and I can set my temperature anywhere in Fahrenheit. What's the precision? I can only go by ones. I can't set it to a half. So my precision is to the nearest degree Fahrenheit. My uncertainty is half of that or 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Precision and uncertainty should always have some sort of units on them because we're talking about an actual measurement. So make sure you include that on there. Now, crazy things that are going to happen that you have to watch for in wording. Because it might not be as simple as here's a number. So read careful and watch. If I said, for instance, I have a bucket. marked in half liters. Oops. I'm going to fill that bucket to three liters. Now let's talk for a minute. What is the precision? What's the smallest measurement with the smallest gap between two lines on my measuring device. It's a half. Half of a liter. So what's the uncertainty? The uncertainty would be half of that. 
And yes, you can work in decimals as long as you don't have to round off. But you all know half of a half is a quarter. Now, what does that mean? If I asked you to write how full I'm making that pail, that three liters, using the uncertainty, and you've seen that in this chapter written as nominal, plus or minus the uncertainty. And we're going to talk about uh, that other thing in a second. Nominal is what my goal is. What was I aiming for? I meant to put three liters in. Can I be certain that I have exactly three liters in that pail? No, because the markings on the pail leave me uncertain by up to a quarter of a liter. So there is how much water is in the pail, including uncertainty. Now what happens measurements? Let's go distances. Um, let's say you're traveling somewhere and you tell me that today you went 43.2 kilometers and so on. I just need some other distances. And let's even um, really make you think. And I ask you to find the total distance. including the uncertainties. That means we have to think about for each of these, what is the uncertainty? All right, this one, and you can't think uncertainty without starting with precision, right? This is one decimal place in kilometers. So the precision is 0.1 of a kilometer. Same for this one, same for this one. So I really have 43.2 plus or minus something. If precision is 0 0.1 of a kilometer, uncertainty is half of precision. Half of 0.1 is 0 0.05. So there's that first measurement with its uncertainty. Second measurement. Precision is 0.1, uncertainty is half of that. Third measurement, 18.1, precision is 0.1, uncertainty is half of that. Those three are easy. Now let's look at this one. 342 meters. This measuring device was more precise than the other one because in this one, the precision is to one meter. So I could write 342 plus or minus, if precision is one, uncertainty is half that, and this is in meters. Now the problem is we're supposed to add these together. We can't add meters to kilometers as is, but now that we have them written in the form we need, I'm going to go ahead and say, well, 342 meters since there's a thousand meters in a kilometer, is 0.342 meters. And 0.5 of a meter is a teeny tiny piece of a kilometer, right? I've got to move my decimal three places. Now I'm crossing this one out in between so I don't forget and add it on, right? Now when we add numbers together that have uncertainties, we had the nominal, the actual left-hand number to left-hand number, and we had uncertainties to uncertainties. So I'm going to grab my calculator and go 43.2, add on 11 and a half, 18.1, and 0 0.342. And I have 73.142. Now the catch is I also have to add up my uncertainties. And I get this crazy number. Okay. So how far was traveled that day? 73 kilometers, give or take 0 0.1505. Because each of those measurements had um, a margin of error, we have to make sure that we include that in our total as well.